There are certainly a lot of things of, for both sides of, on the gun issue not to like in the new state law passed in the aftermath of the Parkland massacre, but there is one area both sides agree on, and that is taking guns away from those with acute mental health issues. Dwayne Lindo joins us with more, Dwayne. Well, Alan, even the NRA and many pro-gun advocates are looking at this provision in this, what now is state law and are saying this has the potential to work statewide. The shooting in Parkland has sparked constant opposition on both sides when it comes to gun debates. But there's a new provision within Florida's gun bill that went through the session that bipartisan groups have been agreeing with. It's a great idea. So when people talk about common sense uh, gun safety regulation or, or firearm safety regulation, this is an example of something that people across the political spectrum can work with. It's known as the red flag legislation. It gives law enforcement the power to remove guns from anyone believed to be a danger to themselves or anyone else. Eventually, the gun owner would be allowed to petition the court to get their gun back. New College of Florida professor Keith Fitzgerald says there's a chance the Parkland shooting could have been averted had this law been in place. Uh, but this has been proven to reduce suicides and in this case, it possibly could have prevented uh, a shooting just like this. Which presents lawmakers with what Fitzgerald calls a policy window to slip in legislation where it's needed. Uh, when something that seemed to be impossible for political reasons for many, many years changes due to an event. And so the, the opportunity to do something new opened up and, and you've got to give credit to these high school kids who said, we're not taking no for an answer, we want some action. Five states currently have these laws on the books, California, Connecticut, Indiana, Oregon, and Washington. Fitzgerald says studies show gun-related suicides by firearm have decreased considerably in these states. So if you can take somebody, uh, take the weapons available to them immediately after they've expressed an intent to do harm, you can get them into mental health and maybe turn everything around. Carol Resigno agrees. She's the president of the Sarasota chapter of the Brady campaign to prevent gun violence and points out the person who is red flagged, more importantly, has a right to due process. There's some concern, I believe, on the other side, on the far right, that uh, there are due process issues here. We think that this law deals with those. People still would have due process. We're not taking away their constitutional rights by doing this. Well, I certainly think it's a better strategy than you know, banning firearms or stripping certain rights from people to get these gun protection orders in place. But pro-gun advocate Jeff Young has reservations with tampering with the Second Amendment, but sees this provision as being a plus. I actually read the entire thing word for word. I was afraid that there might be some loopholes in there or some issues, but it's actually a fairly well-written law that I think addresses a lot of the concerns that I, as a private citizen and gun owner, would have about this particular issue. Fitzgerald agrees. He says, bottom line, this is a provision that will go a long way. Because there were pieces in it that made somebody very upset, and there were pieces of it that made somebody really happy. But here's a little piece that I think will do some real good uh, that actually would never have been considered and now is part of law. Now in the states where the law is currently in effect, there is usually an uptick in the use of the law after a mass shooting occurs in other places. Dwayne, thank you.